Welcome to another episode of Planet Ark. Last time we took a closer look at Turtle Beach that sprawls around most of the northern island to the east of the center. But on the opposite side, divided by a small creek, another beach can be found that is not dominated by one particular species. One animal that can be found here and not on the opposite side of Turtle Beach is the Moshops. This friendly creature makes a calm impression and does so as it has no means of defending itself. By the slightest hint of danger, it will flee, sometimes even leaving its eggs or mates behind. But because of that, the most shops migrated to this part of the beach where the Dilophosaurus is not present. The beach gives a clear view of danger ahead and having fellow most shops nearby makes them feel more at ease. When we travel deeper into the island, towards the cliffs, we find towering trees up top, revealing the biome of thick forestry and jungle. The flora abruptly stops at the cliff's edge, giving it a certain danger for any creature looming too close. At first glance, one might not think life is very active here, as it doesn't sprawl as it does back on the beach. But soon the ground shakes as it becomes apparent that there is definitely life to be found here in the form of the gentle giant Stegosaurus. The Stegosaurus is, though it might leave an aggressive impression by its looks alone, one of the most gentle, albeit territorial dinosaurs out there. Its back has long bladed rows, mostly used for mating purposes rather than protection. Much like the peacock on Earth, the males have a brighter color palette meant to impress a female for a potential partner. Its tail has six long, deadly spikes which the Stegosaurus can use in a whip-like motion to hurt aggressors. There also have been sightings of Stegosaurus with only four spikes, and though the spikes seem like a deadly weapon, in reality, the Stegosaurus cannot use its tail with pinpoint accuracy. If attacked by something like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, rather than killing it, the Stegosaurus would most likely only be able to cripple it. Often Stegosaurus are seen on plains or savannas and roaming in a pack of two, three or sometimes more. The thick jungle makes it seemingly difficult for larger predators to move around, thereby explaining this single Stegosaurus to prefer the jungle on the northern island. If one goes up even higher, nature changes too. The air becomes cooler and the vegetation does not seem as lush. Rare minerals thrive here, and crystals that glow brilliantly in the sun can be seen everywhere along the mineral-rich rock sides. Even here, life can be found in the form of the Pachycephalosaurus. This herbivore looks a bit quaint with its large bulging head and spikes covered all over. Though the Pachy is not a meat-eater, it has a quite aggressive nature. It's not very big compared to other dinosaurs and will therefore quickly make a threatening pose if something comes too close to its territory. The bulging part of its skull is solid bone, and when it lowers its head it lines up with its spine to create the perfect battering ram posture. Besides being effective at hurting incoming predators, again due to its size, it would most likely only be able to cripple something like a T-Rex as it breaks its leg bone. It is also used to duel other males to fight for the right to mate with another female. Right next to the roaming patchy is a steep cliff that leads to an alcove at the end of the creek leading deeper into the island. If a dinosaur falls off the cliff, it is trapped here, and therefore the dominant type of creatures that can be found are that of the flying type and the swimming type. One of those flying types is the Tapahara. This beautiful creature's distinct future is its large head crest, and large head in general compared to its body. It has a massive wingspan, 
and has claws at each end better suitable for climbing high trees or cliffs than the Pteranodon. Its diet consists mostly of nuts, berries, but also smaller land animals and fish. The latter is the reason for the Tapahara to descend down here. As the creek ends in the alcove, a lot of fish get trapped here, meaning they are an easy catch for looming predators from above. Its size scares off most of the competition, creating an entire buffet that this flying animal can feast upon. And though the water on the surface looks peaceful, underneath, death is rampant. Though fish get trapped in the shallow water, they can at least still swim around. But larger creatures, like the Basilosaurus, are too big and get stranded in areas like this. It is rare that this happens, but it does occur from time to time. With the inability to turn around, it lies at the bottom, waiting to die. It seems that nearby marine animals like the manta rays and ichthyosaurus have noticed this too. When the large creature like this gets stranded, it also means an easy meal for others under the surface, and it looks like some of the manta rays have already started feasting on the giant whale-like creature while it's still alive. Some of the ichthyosaurus patiently wait their turn, as it gets quite crowded in waters like these. Normally, the ichthyosaurus enjoys a diet of smaller fish, squids, and shellfish found along the shore. But in an environment where it's not every day that food presents itself on the platter, many of them will not slip up on an opportunity like this. They lack piercing capabilities with their snout, as it's not reinforced at the end. But they have tiny, razor-sharp teeth along the edge that are perfect for picking out meat from an already opened wound. A little further down the creek, towards the ocean, a similar display occurred, where a megalodon had beached itself in too shallow water. It could still move a little bit, thereby not inviting as many hungry marine animals as the Basilosaurus did, but nevertheless, vulturing predators swam close to see if the megalodon had weakened to where it could not bite around itself in a panic frenzy. Above the surface, another flying creature can be seen shifting around. It is the small and hard to miss Dimorphodon. The Dimorphodon is one of the smallest flying creatures found on planet Ark. It often goes unnoticed by larger, slower predators and benefits from its speed when it hunts for prey like small fish or insects. It has also occurred that it feeds on the larger carcass of an already passed animal on land if it's abandoned. The Dimorphodon can often be found in groups, and in forested areas, it is more occurrence that they have a more dull and camouflaged color pattern. It is fascinating to realize that in such a small part of the island, such a distinct ecosystem and versatility exists with the creatures present. If one looks in the shallow waters and beaches at this alcove, some peculiar creatures come into frame. The trilobite is a creature found all throughout planet Ark near the ocean. It has no defense mechanisms, except its hardened exoskeleton. It's difficult to bite through for medium to small sized predators, their main source of threat. They are most likely to be attacked on the beach, as they are very slow as they move on many tiny legs searching for things to eat buried in the sand. Once attacked, they will try to get to the nearest water as fast as possible as they are able to move much quicker in a water environment. It's one of the few creatures found on planet Ark where no other color variation is known of. As we go back to the jungles on the northern island one last time, we find the biggest creature on the island, a beautiful docile Diplodocus. This long-necked creature is part of some of the biggest creatures found throughout planet Ark. Its main way of defense is its whip-like tail. Unlike the Stegosaurus, the Diplodocus can use it with pinpoint accuracy, but it is not often forced to do so. Only the biggest of predators will attack a Diplodocus, and those are not found on the Northern Island or on Turtle Beach. Therefore, this particular Diplodocus faces no danger and is one of the reasons why it lowers its head to eat from lower plants and bushes near the ground. Though its physical build is more horizontal compared to a creature like the Brontosaurus, 
the fact that its head is high off the ground is another way to avoid damage. By lowering its head, it bears its weak spot and will only do so when it feels absolutely safe. And that concludes our look at the Northern Island on the eastern side of Central Arc. It is amazing to see how many different animals live together in an enclosed, self-sustaining ecosystem isolated from other land masses. Next time, we will travel to new places and some that are much more dangerous than the Northern Island. It is time to look at some of the islands to the north side, where ash and smoke fills the air and huge predators roam the plains. It is here where fellow carnivores get eaten by other carnivores. It is here where the term survival of the fittest gets an entirely new meaning. If you like these narrative series, please consider becoming a sponsor on my Patreon, which can be found in the description below. Hopefully, I will see you all on the next episode of Planet Ark.